Yeah, this is probably one of the biggest posters that I've owned. I'm thinking of just putting it right there. I don't know yet, but that one's the coolest one, though, so far that I own. It was a great show, though. He is hilarious in person. What's up, guys? Derek here. Back in the shop again. This thing's at it one more time. Well, it's always gonna be at it. I've printed till this thing has literally broken itself. Warranties. That's all I could say. Warranties are amazing. Why are you printing this time? <laughs> Robbie is finally done also. This is Robbie. He's so awesome. Look at him. I mean, he, he's even got eyes on the back of his head, so he's seeing everything. See, he's also watching me and you. Now me, now you, but also me. But anyways, Robbie's finally done, and he uh, fits almost the full length of my hand. He's a big dude. Bigger than I thought it would be, but still pretty cool. But this time, though, we're going the opposite of these guys on this print. Thanks to my buddy who sent me the files for these. Thank you. You know who you are. Anyone know what this is? Any guesses? No? It's a pinhole camera. And it's 3D printed. And mine in particular, I think it's called the Flyer? The one that I'm printing here. Uh, uh, yeah, that guy. The Flyer 6x6. So, which is actually going to be pretty pretty cool and pretty interesting. I've never worked with analog film before. It's I've been a digital kid. Um, so it'll be, it'll be interesting to learn, uh, learn about analog here throughout this whole print. And so far, the print's actually... It's been about seven hours so far. I started it this morning. It's about... Uh, about almost six in the afternoon right now. So it's almost done. Let's get you a better angle so that way you can see what's going on here. So since we're printing in all black, and if you know anything about cameras, you know why we're printing in black. And if you don't know, well, if you print it in anything else other than black, then your prints are going to be whatever color uh, filament you use. So if you print it in blue, your pictures are going to have a blue tint to it. Or if you print it in green, it's going to be green, green and whatever. You get the point. So we got what I'm assuming is a print left indicator back here. There's the actual casing where the light's going to get flowed or where the light's gonna flow in for the print. That's where the light is. I have one more print that I gotta do that's gonna print the top casing and the lid for that and a couple of other parts for the, that holds the film together. But you just apply a little, little tiny screw right there for the lid and the idea, again, if you don't know much about cameras, the whole idea is when you want to take a picture or whatever, you just flip open Light's gonna flow through and go on to the photo, uh, photo paper. It's gonna go on the, the, the picture, the negative film. It's gonna go on the film. See, I've only been a digital kid. I've only known digital cameras. I mean, I granted, I grew up in the 90s, but I was too young. I don't remember analog cameras. I vaguely remember you gotta, you know, always rewind it. <laughs> and then, you hear the flash uh, charging up again. That was it. That's all. That's all I remember. You know, the actual process of it. Hopefully I can learn something new from this project. But it's actually 
pretty interesting to see this one in particular getting built. Um, because I, I'm still sticking with Cura also on this, and I found the magic number for the, uh, for the print speed, 27. If you're running Cura out there, and especially if you're running a Robo 3D like I am out there, 27 for your print speed, you'll be good. Because it, I think it defaults also to 40. 40, in my opinion, way too fast. It, I've had prints literally just get destroyed because of the speed. 27, yeah, it's going to take a lot longer than you want it to. Trust me, it's going to turn out like, here's one that I just printed earlier this morning for my 3D hubs. Well, Marvin, it just, it's phenomenal. Look at that. Look at the detail. 27, trust me, you'll be good. Okay, so the first half is done. I don't, I don't. Oh, that's it. Okay. Um, so there's the brim. I, I personally like printing a brim. Um, I don't know if it's needed, but I just enjoy printing a brim. Do you like printing a brim? I do. That's pretty friggin' solid. Let's print the cap and some of the internals. So as I get the uh, last little bit of accessories queued up here, the printer's re-warming up. Got it. Body at least is, uh, there you go, at least now you can see it. Body's printed. But there's a weird design flaw. I don't know if it's a design flaw or if it's just misconstrued in some of the uh, promotional videos and whatever that they have on their website. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So, you see where this little notch is, this little hourglass style is? They say, though, to load the film on the video and they load it directly behind that, but technically this hourglass part will be right in front of the, the hole there, the view hole. So, just already by looking at it, you put the film here and it looks like you're supposed to lay it over that. And then underneath there, it, it's not very well depicted on the website. In my opinion, maybe I'm just totally misunderstanding it. But maybe somebody can help clear this up for me. If anyone's looking for a piercer, I do great work part-time. Here's an example of some of my work. Anyone? I know it sucked, come on. So I did do a little more research, sorry about the noise, we're still printing the accessories. Did do a little more research on this little guy right here. And apparently, according to the website, you're supposed to knock that out through the back here. Let me see if I can do it. But that's, that's, what, that's what the material says. You're just supposed to, through the back here, knock that out and that's supposed to just bloop, pop right out that explains a lot but let me see if i can get it knocked out first okay so i got it but if you can see that there's a little bit left on the bottom that makes so much more sense but i'm gonna take the dremel to that and round that out a little more one thing too that they do recommend get yourself some sandpaper and sand right in the areas too that you broke off because you will definitely need to. There'll be a lot of loose filament. And right in between in the spot where you're really supposed to be loading it, right behind this uh, box here, there's a thin line. You can't really see it on camera, but in between here and the actual back half, uh, it, it, once, you, once you take some sandpaper to it, then you'll really understand. It's pretty tight fit at first, when you're first getting the sandpaper through there, but afterwards though, it's much nicer and it'll make the film a lot easier to load. Here's another really cool tip that I, I personally use. If you don't have a Dremel of some sort like this, just get yourself some, as long as you got some sandpaper and a good handful of nails, just wrap it directly around it. I'll take care of the little spots. Well, it's about 
day, I think two or three of this build. Um, here's been my biggest problem. So I have the main body. That's not, the, that's, that wasn't the problem. Biggest problem is the cap, the lid, and two of the main uh, spool holders. I ended up downloading two more. I'm also trying to make sure that this is calibrating correctly while I'm filming this. Problem is, when you first load this guy in, it's upside down. Well, here's the other problem too. When you first load it in, not only is it upside down, but it's also like that much off the virtual build plate. And I don't know, unless if you did support type everywhere, that's the only way that just paused for some reason. That's the only way that I could see that being built. So unless if you flipped it, makes the most logical sense. I have touching build plate turned on. I like brim. I hate, I'm not a raft fan. Um, and the biggest problem too, it, it'll slice up to about, this is about a hundred and some odds, uh, about 150 layers. It'll get to about layer 30, which is technically right there, right when it starts to build that top piece there. And then it just flips out either the filament breaks or the G coating just gets all freaked out. And now this is just paused for whatever the hell. Uh, and stop hit X. All right, I gotta take a look at this. I gotta try to figure out what the crap happened.